subscribe to our YouTube channel, Joy Learning TV. Into Junior High School Hour on Joy Lady TV. It's your day night, Isaac of Hidabakwa, facilitating for ICT. Well, today, I quite remember some weeks ago, we did something on networking, and I told you that we were not able to finish the whole topic. So today, we're going to continue with networking and see where it ends. Well, I want us, Nets, or us, Nedites, we are supposed to have some knowledge about networking because we use them all day okay so for our content standards we are going to talk about identifying so the main concept the, the whole networking that we are going to we are studying we are going to identify the concept of computer networking for global communication so it is basically for what communication not necessarily any other thing so um, we are looking at drawing um, diagrams to illustrate features of networks. We are also looking at discussing the entrepreneurial opportunities in networking. We looked at the types. Uh, we've also looked at uh, some infrastructure or what we call network topology. So we are basically going to look at these two. Now, when we started, we made mention that we, when we talk about networking or computer networking, we are talking about what when or how computers are connected through wireless means or cable means or any other way where they can communicate to each other. Now, we went ahead to talk about types where we spoke about the local area network, which we said is within a short period or a short area or within a very small locality. Then we also spoke about what the metropolitan area network. We spoke about the wide area network and all those things. Now, we went ahead and spoke about the tools needed for networking, of which we made mention of what? That we have what we call a hub. We have what we call a server. We have what we call a, a wireless server. There are a whole lot of them. And also spoke about the topology, as I said. And when we were talking about topology, we mentioned that we have, it is the way the networking or the computers are connected in a particular locality. And we said they can be in a straight line. It can be in a mesh form. That's where we have the full mesh topology. Or it can even be in what we call the star topology. That means it appears like a star. And this is an example of it, the star topology. Where, let me see if I can draw my star. Uh, you can go in this way. Aha, uh -huh, it's a star. So it's in the form of a star. A very good example. Then we have the hybrid topology. When we talk about hybrid topology, we are talking about the type of connection which fuses or is comprised of two different topologies. So maybe you can connect a star topology to a um, uh, how do we call it? A full mesh topology. Okay, so these are the types of topology that we have. We have the point-to-point -to -point topology, which is what? In the form of a line. We can have the bus topology, which is also in a linear form. Then we can have the ring topology. That means the connection runs in what? A circle. That's the ring topology. Then we've already spoken about the star topology. Then we have the tree topology. The tree topology is such a way that one particular computer is connected to probably three different computers, then connected to another set. That means they run in a family tree mode or any other tree mode you know. Now we also have the mesh topology. Uh, we said we have the hybrid. We've already explained this too. Now, today we let's start with the difference between the local area network, the wide area network, and the what metropolitan area network. I know the other time we did something about it, but we didn't go further into what 
their differences are. Now, so let's look at this. The first one we can say it is limited within a house, office, or a school. That is for what the local area network is limited or it runs within a small locality, within maybe a school, a, cla um, a class, it can be possible. You can even have what? A home. If you have a wireless network at home, what you are running is a local area network. It does not go beyond your boundary or what we call the bandwidth. It will not go beyond it. So anyone who is outside your network bandwidth will not be able to access your network. Then we also have the metropolitan area network. It says what? It is limited within a city. That is a metropolitan. So within a metropolitan or a metropolis, this network can be what? Assessed anywhere. But immediately you go outside the metropolis, then your network is then cut off. Then we have wide area network. The wide area network is not limited to a metropolis, but can go further to maybe a nationwide network. It can go further towards a nationwide network. And I'm, I'm looking at it from the point of a satellite, where a satellite is sending this, um, how do we call it, internet connection. I think it can go beyond even the country, and if you go to other countries, let's say Africa having, or West Africa having a, a satellite, which provides it with this um, service, internet service, or networking services. Okay, now let's go back to the land. We have the land, the setup cost is low since less hardware is required. Yes, if I have one computer or a laptop and my brother is also having another one and another person, if three of us are having this equipment, we can just have a network cable connected to these three devices so that we can communicate uh, with ourselves. Anyone in his room or a room can communicate to each other. But when it comes to the metropolitan area network, it's higher. The cost is higher. Since you are transmitting or you are trying to connect a computer from, let's say, point A, which is here in Kukumbili, uh, where we have uh, multimedia here, and you want to connect to someone, let's say, in, uh, let's say, Circle or Malata or let's say beyond Circle, we can go to maybe Adabraka. Then what we can see is that we are going to use a lot of cable. If we are not going to use cable, then whatever equipment we are going to use, we are going to have a lot of what equipment or hardware which would send the signals from one computer to another. So maybe we will have nodes which will be transmitting the information from one point to another. Then when we come to the wide area network, it is the most expensive. So you see how it runs. The local area network is less expensive. The uh, metropolis or metropolitan area network is expensive or higher than when we talk about the wide area network since it covers a country it can even cover what? A continent. That means this one will go higher than what? What the metropolitan area is what? Expected or you, the, the amount of money you are supposed to spend on the metropolitan will go higher. So with the, that's wide area network, we can go higher or the price will go higher. Now, let's look at another one. When we talk about bandwidth, we are talking about the distance it covers. Normally, it's in radius. So the distance it covers, that is what the bandwidth. Now, we say that the land covers what, or the bandwidth for a land is very low. Remember, I said that when you are dealing with land, that's a local area network, maybe in-house, or maybe a Wi-Fi, let's say, you are using your mobile phone as 
a wireless connection to all other devices in your house. So that means you have switched on your hotspot. Now, this hotspot has a limit. Immediately you exceed that limit, you have gone beyond its bandwidth. So we are saying that what the local area network or your mobile phone, which is acting as what your local area network, has what a low bandwidth. You can you can experiment it at home. Switch on your hotspot and start, let's say, leave it in the room. Start moving away from your phone. Let's have another phone or another device connected to your, your hotspot. Then start moving away from it. You realize that immediately you go out your house or go a little further, you realize that you lose connection with what? That particular hotspot. I hope you get it. So that is what the low bandwidth, it's very low. Then when we come to the metropolitan area, as I said, it is within the metropolis. So it does not go beyond the metropolis. Even if it goes beyond the metropolis, just a few meters beyond the metropolis. So they have higher bandwidth. But the wide area network has the what? Did I hear you write? Did I hear you say what? Highest bandwidth? Yes. It has the what? The highest bandwidth. Okay. So let's look at the range. The range of their bandwidth. Your mobile phone cannot go up to one kilometer. Yes. The bandwidth of your mobile phone cannot go uh, a kilometer. No. It's lesser. But there are other devices that go beyond the one kilo, uh, the mobile phone's bandwidth. I just use the mobile phone as an example. But there are other local area networks which go be, uh, maybe up to one kilometer. So we are saying that what is as very low as what one kilometer. But when we come to the metropolitan area network, then we can talk about what 100 kilometers. So you can see that is what a very, very wide area. Then when you come to beyond the 100 kilometers, then you have entered what we call the wide area network. The wide area network. Okay. Now let's look at the type of cables that will be used during the connections. So for the local area network, he says the Ethernet cable is used as the main communication medium. The Ethernet cable is used as the main communication medium. Then when we come to the metropolitan, that's the man, we have the coaxial cable, the coaxial cable and microwave communication technologies are used. The microwave communication technologies. Okay. Then when we come to the wide area network, then we can talk about high speed communication networks, which, uh, as I mentioned, if you can remember, I told you that when you're talking about wide area network, where let's say we go beyond Ghana, West Africa, and maybe Africa, then we can talk about what? We can talk about a satellite. So if Africa or West Africa is having a satellite, anywhere within the zone of the satellite, you can access the internet or you can access the network. That's what we are all praying for, that Africa will have its own satellite. Yeah, so that we can have common access to internet and all those things. It will make communication very, very, very easy. You don't have to have any hitches when you are communicating. So we have telephone lines can also be used in the world, in the wide area network. Telephone lines can also be used in the wide area of networks. Remember, telephone lines, we have cables running all over our roof. And also, we have what we call the submarine cables, which people have also started connecting through those places. Okay. Apart from the local area network, the metropolitan area network, and the wide area network, we can also have what we call the campus area network. Yeah, it's not a new addition, but it derives its name from its location or the 
space within which it covers. Be the space in which it covers. So with this space that I'm talking of, we are talking about what? A campus. So within a campus, we can have a network. And if you go outside the campus, the network goes off. And I once we visited a school, and I realized that everywhere within the school I entered, I was having access to what? Internet. That is an example of what? Uh, campus area network. You can go to the universities and some other secondary schools, you can have that. You can have the same campus area network there. So it says that what? This type of network connects two or more local area networks together through routers and switches. Remember, we've already discussed this. Through what? Routers and what? Switches. And finally, to create a single network. So let's say we have network A. This one has one, two, three, three computers connected as a single network, which is connected to, let's say, another one, one, two, three. Then we have another one. So within these three networks, this network one, network two, network three. Within these three networks, there are routers and switches in, at every junction. Which will connect the two local or the three local area networks to make it easy for what communication. Okay, now let's look at the advantages of the networking. Advantages of computer networking. Now, the first one we can say is we can talk about affordability. Affordability. Now, when we talk about affordability, depending on the type of network you are accessing or the net type of network you want to acquire or you are using, the affordability will, uh, will either be higher or lower. So if you are using a local area network, you might have a lower, uh, maybe your cost will be low. But if you are using a wide area network or you are the main um, provider of that service, your cost will be going high. Or even if you are assessing the service, you will pay a higher cost. Because let's say if you are in circle right now and you want to have access to your network, not your telecommunication, your mobile phone network, no. But you want to have access to your network or the network, that, the internet that you use, you realize that you have to pay high for a longer bandwidth. And the higher the bandwidth, the higher the cost. Remember, one kilometer has low cost. 100 kilometers has higher cost. And when you go to what? Beyond 100 kilometers, then your cost is what? Huge. I would say higher, higher. <laughs> okay, now let's talk about protection. When we talk about protection, we can look at, um, from the first view, the land, local area network. Because it is through cable connections, normally the, the connection is very secured. Or let's say, if I want to put it in percentage-wise, I can say it's about 80% um, secured. You don't know. It's 80% secure. You don't know who can hack into your system. Nowadays, we are using uh, a lot of sophisticated gadgets. Then when we talk about wide area network, which is very wide, then we, can, we can say that the security or the protection is very low. Since most often it is true wireless connection or satellite connection, it is easy for hackers or uh, programmers to easily what, have access to other people's what, information or their system. And you know that when we, uh, we were spoken about what we call the key loggers and all those things, when we were dealing with viruses, if you have not um, if you are not there when I was talking about viruses, go back to your uh, page on YouTube and go and search for viruses. You will find it there. We spoke about viruses and we spoke about what we call keyloggers, where they send you malicious information, you click on them, and unknowingly, 
you don't see anything happen on your computer or on your phone. But unknowingly, as you enter, it is also entering the, the virus or the program is copying whatever you are keying. Whatever you press, it copies it. That's what we call the key loggers. They are very dangerous. So protection when you are having what? A wide area network is very, very what? Low. When you talk about metropolitan area network, it's also low. What about campus? Campus is even most, it's more, more, it's more dangerous <laughs> than any other one because we have daring people on campus, people who want to challenge themselves. They want to see if they, are, they, they can hack into systems. They are there. There are a lot of nerds over there who wants to try it out. So we can have that one. Then we have accessibility, easy accessibility of data. Now, when we talk about easy accessibility of data, I think the local area network, you can have easy accessible, uh, accessibility to data. Only when your data cable is damaged, that's when you have problem with what? Data. But when you're talking about the wide area network, which transmits through what? Satellite. Well, when there's an issue with a satellite, someone must go up there to fix it. And I know there are always engineers up there fixing it. Yeah, I know most of you want to be there's the astronauts and uh, a lot of you will be learning aerospace, aerodynamics, or aero what 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 engineering. A lot of you will be doing that. And I'll be waiting to see you on TV. Uh, Guardians going to space. It will be wonderful. And I want to be those people be the ones watching uh, this enjoy learning. Uh, those watching enjoy learning should go to space first. Okay, so we can talk about high speed. Now we're talking about high speed. The local area network is not as high as the uh, metropolitan area network. The one with the highest high speed is the uh, wide area network. Uh, that's the wide area network. Then we talk about what wireless medium, wireless medium. It is easy to have what the local area network as a wireless medium. Now disadvantages: <laughs> high cost of maintenance. Yes, networks or depending on the type of network, it demands a lot of money or the cost of maintaining your devices is very what high so high cost of maintenance and we have the limited number of nodes that can be connected let's say if you are using your phone your mobile your smartphone as a, a hotspot or a wireless device what happens is that you realize that you can't connect more than six devices sometimes you connect you can connect up to about five devices can only connect depending on your setup to you can also limit the number of devices that can connect Sometimes to prevent people from connecting or people who I have ever connected my phone to from having access, I limit the connection to one. That means I'm the only one who can connect it. You understand? So you can limit your connection, but the number of nodes or the number of devices that can connect to a wireless device is dependent or you know, sometimes what limited. Unlike the universities or the what we call the campus area network. With those ones, they have different nodes. So normally, you will see that the wireless or the Wi-Fi they are using is having different names. So anyone that you connect to, you can easily have what internet access on them. Now let's look at some benefits of using the networking, or using networking in institutions. Now, one, the first and foremost, we connect to a network to, what, to be able to share resources. So always have it in mind that you are not connected to a network just for connection's sake. It is to connect to receive a resource or to get resources. If that is not the purpose or it's not uh, the purpose of communication, then you don't need to connect to a network. Because immediately you connect to a network, one, you become very vulnerable. Immediately you connect to a network, you are what? Vulnerable. If anyone, people like you, nerds, are on there, you can easily grab people's information. 
I don't want to say hack. Uh, you are grabbing, you are testing them. You are not hacking. You are doing what you call ethical hacking. Okay, so you say what? Share resources from one computer to another. So that's the first and most important thing when you connect to the network. Now, we also want what? We create files and store them in one computer, access those files from another computer connected over a network. And one of those great resources, or I'll say networks that I can say came to save us all, is what we call the cloud, cloud networking or cloud computing. It's been one of the most used or one of the best resources that we have. Formerly, we have to buy spaces on people's server to be able to what, save documents and have our resources in there. And sometimes we can't even save it there. We have to save it on our mobile phones or our desktops or our computers. And when they crash, my nemesis, I remember I had a lot of data on a particular hard drive and it fell down. And unfortunately, I lost every data on that hard drive. I lost very important data. I lost everything. If I had backed it up on a, how do you call it, a cloud, it would be better because that one, no matter where I go, I can still have access to it. You only and only if I have what? Internet access. So cloud computing has become one of the best resources when it comes to what? Networking. So you can have your what? Your files on the cloud and wherever you go, you can choose not to take your, uh, how do we call it? your laptop or whatever, just have your phone, internet connection, you are good to go. We can connect what a printer, scanner to one computer within a network. A printer and a scanner is connected to what? Just one computer within a network, but enable all other computers connected to the same network to be able to print from that printer. It is very possible where we have maybe computer A connected to just a single printer, then you allow others which are connected to the same network to be able to have access to what that printer so that they can also from their workstation or from their work dungeon, they can what print through that same printer. Okay, so we also, we are also looking at entrepreneurial opportunities in networking computing devices. Entrepreneurial opportunity in networking devices. Hey, but don't forget, we are watching what? Joy Learning on what? Well, Joy Learning TV. This is the JHS session, the junior high session. And we are now currently looking at what? Basic 7. That is the same as what junior high one. And we are talking about what computer networks. We are talking about what computer networks. We've dealt a lot about the hardware stuff. Now we are looking at what most of what the applications or what we start to benefit from networks. And as we started, we spoke about um, the advantages. We've spoken about the disadvantages. We have spoken about the uh, benefits. We've also looked at um, how do we call it, the differences or the similarities between the local area network, metropolitan area network, and the world wide area network. So for those of you who are just joining us, that's what we've been up to. Now, we are going to the benefits or the entrepreneurial side. What do we stand to gain if we want to have a network of our own? Or what do we stand to gain where we have a network of our own. Yes, if I forgot to tell you, you are supposed to take your books as nets and jot something down. If you have not taken them, just take them and jot something down for me. I want you to tell me, just write a few pointers on what you start to gain. Maybe if you want to be an entrepreneur, what are some of the benefits you get as an entrepreneur with networks? Try and write something down for me. I'm giving you about a minute. A minute can write a lot. A minute can write a lot. So count it down. Okay, now let's look at this. 
When we talk about the benefits, we have grouped them into about seven of them. We have the business aspects. We have the file sharing. We have the printer sharing, of which we've spoken about during our benefits, you know, benefits to us. Then we can also have the health aspects. We have the school aspects. We have the social aspect. I think that is all. So let's start with the business aspect. The business aspect. Who, in the first place, let me ask you, who is an entrepreneur? Someone will say entrepreneur. Who is an entrepreneur? Well, when we talk about an entrepreneur, we are talking about a person or an individual who sets up a business on his own and manages it on his own. Well, uh, we can talk about CEOs. Not all CEOs are entrepreneurs. Someone who develops a business idea, sets up the business, and moves the business into action on his or her own. That is what, more or less like what an entrepreneur. So we are looking at what the business side of networking. Now, sharing, that's the business side. Sharing information and resources. That's the first one. Computer network allow business and organizations to have a number of computers that share data and resources, even if they are not in the same physical confinement or physical location. Now, imagine if I am in, uh, let's say, Office A, which is located in Accra, and Office B is located somewhere in the northern part of Ghana, maybe Sandema, then we have to share resources. Do I have to pick a vehicle from Sandema or from Accra to Sandema to get that resource? No. The easiest way is to what? have an internet connection or a network connection where we can have what? Uh, we can share resources. Someone will say, ah, say, but you have been using internet, internet, instead of what? Network, network, network. Yes, I am using them interchangeably. But I want to ask you a question. What is internet? Internet simply means international network. So it is still ref in reference to what? A network. International network. So we are talking about a network that ranges, that is, we can say it's more or less a wide area network. Yeah? The wide area network, which is what WWW is also what? World Wide Web. So we are talking about a wider area. And we said the wide area network can what? Go as far as what? A continent and even beyond. So we are looking at what? the internet or a network, then I'm referring to what? One and the same thing. Okay. So I can connect through what? A network or an internet connection which will send me the resource or I can easily what? Have the resource that I need from what? Sandema to Accra or from Accra to Sandema. The same way if I want to pick something from Cape Coast or Elubo or even Togo or maybe Burkina Faso or our neighboring countries, if you go beyond Benin, Nigeria, even the US, and most of you have been receiving messages and even downloading files from the internet. Well, do you know where those files are kept? They are somewhere beyond Africa. Most of them can be found in India, some can be found in the United States of America, where they are placed on service, and we can easily have access to download them. And you have been receiving messages from all those places too. So you see how easy when you are dealing in business. As a business person, I think it is prudent to have an internet connection. Okay. Client server configuration. Who is a client and what is a server? We have already done what a client and what a server is. Well, if you don't know, we'll still come back to it, so just hold up. Through a computer network, the employees of an organization can access the organization's database remotely in a client-server configuration. So over here, we are talking about being able to what, have access to what, the data without being connected directly into your, what, your office system. So what we do is that 
um, let's say we give you an access code or a code or let's say a login that will give you access to what the server in the office so when you are even at home at midnight when everything is off the main server is still on where you don't need to be attached to that server but can be at home and still have access to that server so there are certain websites if you as a person or an on uh, let's say you, you are not an employee of that company if you have access or you try to have access to it you don't go through let's say you go to uh, commercial bank you know ghana commercial bank then you want to have access to which is now gcb bank by the way you want to have access to what their system if you don't work there you don't have access to the system and the only way you can remotely have access to that system is if that is if you have what a client server configuration or your phone or your device have been configured to that particular server the organization's data is stored in the server which are powerful computers that can hold massive amount of what data and managed by a system administrator so this system administrator is the one who will give you your what your access to what that server e-commerce e-commerce simply means electronic commerce that's called electronic business e-commerce where we buy and sell online i know most of us have been doing it or both of us do it we order for food online we buy from other companies who sell products we buy from them and they deliver it at home this is these are all modes of what um, benefits and entrepreneur will receive or entrepreneurial benefits that we receive as business models we can even buy medicines car parts yes there are if there are drug stores online where you purchase the medicine it's brought to your home communication by the way don't buy any drug without a prescription if you do that you are abusing the drug we have communication Computer networks have paved way for fast interpersonal communication, not just what among employees or business of an organization, but everyone. If I pick my phone, I can call anybody I need. Gone were the days where when you want to talk to someone in the United States, you have to go and queue. The person will give you a time. Now let's say, yeah, uh, maybe or Akosha Medu or. Uh, Brabusa, I'll call you maybe on Friday at 10 o'clock a.m. 10 o'clock a.m. And if you make the mistake and you get there at 11, you miss the call. So you have to be there waiting by the phone for the call or be in a queue. If you want to call the person, you have to be in a queue to get the person. That is where communication, we, we, we've gone through communication, we've gone through a lot. And there were times where if you wanted to communicate with someone, you have to record it even on a cassette, a magnetic tape cassette, and send it down to Ghana or to any other part of the country for the person to play and listen to what you are saying. And when you are turned, you can also record it and send it to the person. And we suffered. But we now have technology which is easy for us. We can just make a call and the person receives it. We can just send a text and immediately the person receives a replies. Okay. We also have networking of computers help the network users to share data files. Then we have hardware sharing. Users can share devices such as printers, of which we've already spoken about, scanners, CD-ROMs, where you can be at your workstation and still print something from another place. We can, is that is very, very possible. Now, application sharing. Sometimes I have an application on my device. You don't have your, uh, that's the application on your device. There's a certain a setup that we can do so that you can also use my application, which is not on your device. You can still use it on your device. It's very easy. We have network allow users to communicate using email, news group, and video conferencing, and all those things. We have doctors which now it's very very important doctors 
now during surgery do not need to um, invite experts they do what we call um, telecommunication there will be televisions over there where they have experts who will be advising them on what to do and what not to do let's say if the person is um, um, having a surgical operation on someone and realize that there's a complication there are other experts who also advise that no don't touch this place rather go through this um, area and you'll be able to have access and uh, it helps a lot it's helping a lot it's helping saving lives so network is doing a lot now schools they have these eight teachers students and administrators have access to what data at any time central printers can be made accessible to students more conveniently you are in a classroom let's say a classroom or let me, let's me say a smart classroom where you want to print something you can easily from your desk print something out but you have to seek permission print something out then later go for it maybe the notes that was given or the assignment you can print it out through the central printer students can easily collaborate on group projects using network software applications and we can we have to say what it makes administration of test also easy and assessment easy yeah it's very simple i can put a test item on the system or the network then everyone can go have access to it i think i did some the other time very soon i'll be coming up with something like that very 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 soon i'll put a test item there when you are done you see your score then i see i get my score too i get the data of those who have answered now networking gaming a lot of you have been doing that whilst playing your games or your game pad, you have your headset on and you are connected to a network where you can communicate with the other person who is also playing or having fun with you. Okay, we have voice over IP. That's VoIP, voice over internet protocol. It's a revolutionary change in telecommunication which allows to send telephone calls, voice data using standard internet protocols rather than traditional PST and okay so very simple we are talking about voice over ip you are able to call internationally you can call anybody anywhere and it goes smoothly you don't have any hitches like the old days where if you call it there will be scratches uh, you can be calling and someone will be talking a different person who will just interfere in your system so this is where we will end today's lesson but we will end it here with an ass assessment or an assignment we have an assessment, very simple one. It says, what is a computer network? Or what is computer networking? Then we have, what is network topology? And mention four examples of network topology. Very simple questions, three simple questions. So I'm giving you five minutes to write your answers for me. Five minutes, very simple. What is computer networking? What is computer networking? What is network topology? And mention four examples of network topology. Time is about ending. You have a minute to go. So let's look at our solutions for the exercise our solutions so what is a computer network or what is computer networking a computer networking is the process remember we said networking not network computer networking is a process of connecting two or more computers in order to share a common resource now these are the most important keywords share common resource is a statement that you don't need to take forward take away from the definition for what computer networking it must be included so two or more computers in order to share a common resource okay i know you had it Mark yourself, I don't cheat too. If you are cheating, I'm looking at you. Now, what is network topology? 
we said when we talk about topology, it's about the arrangement or how the networks are arranged. So it says what? Network topology refers to the layout, the layout or arrangement of the computers and devices in a communication network. So how the communication network is, or the network or computers are arranged becomes what you call what? The network topology. And we said we can give examples, as the third question says, for examples, we can mention what? The star topology. We can talk about the bus topology. We can talk about the hybrid topology. We can also talk about the ring topology and even talk about what? The mesh topology. So this is what we have here today. It's so easy, right? I know. Very, very, very easy. And most of you had all correct, or all of you. That we made little mistakes, and even when we make mistakes, we build on them to do something better. So, what have we learned so far? This is the end of the networking or computer network. We first defined computer network just right now, and we also went ahead to look at what the types of network, which we mentioned what the LAN, the one. We have the band, we have the campus area network, the CAN. We can have a lot of them. And we also have private area networks. I remember we spoke about private area networks. We have a lot of them. Then we also spoke about what network topology or how networks are arranged. And we spoke about the benefits. We spoke about the devices we need when we are connected to a particular network. And we made mention that what we have computers. We have what we call routers. We have what we call um, splitters. We have, uh, how do we call it? We have um, the wireless uh, modems. We have our mobile phones. These are all devices that can help us communicate or help us connect to what? A network. We also have what? Cables. We have cables that can help us. The telephone cables and the coastal cables. Okay. Then we also spoke about the entrepreneurial side, where we spoke about how business can, businesses can also take advantage of what networking, through what communication, buying online. We can talk about hospitals, easy for you to have access to your, what, your files. Let's say if we have all hospitals in Ghana connected to a single network, would it be easy if I'm not able to access hospital A and I go to hospital B, my name is entered and immediately my information comes up, my medical history, everything comes up. It will be very easy for us to have good medical healthcare. So I've given you a clue. I'm looking forward that one of you would design this for us. Uh, one of you should design this for us uh, where we have our medical system streamlined to one single network. It would be a very, very good thing for Ghana. Okay, we also spoke about Schools having was central printers where students can print their, their works, homeworks. We have easy access to what assessments. We also spoke about the, um, how do we call it? The, um, the similarities between what the networks. Uh, we spoke about their speed limits, their, their distance that they cover, and a whole lot. I hope you have learned a lot. If you have not, just go back to our previous lesson, go through the lesson, take this lesson also, go through and have a whole lesson together. Well, till we meet again, my name is Isaac Ohire Amankwa, your facilitator for ICT, and this is the Junior High School Hour. Till we meet again, as I say, bye-bye. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Joy Learning TV.